Hello. This week we are talking about a very hot topic. Yeah, and that is marijuana use during pregnancy. If this is your first time to our channel, I'm Sarah, a board certified OBGYN and mom of two toddlers. I'm Kurt, and I'm a board certified pediatrician. And, and we, we are, are the, the Doctors Bjorkman. Welcome back to our channel. We share medical evidence, expert advice, and our own in real life experience on all things related to pregnancy, birth, postpartum, parenting, and beyond. Mm -hmm. This week, we are reviewing some of the current evidence about cannabis use during pregnancy. Um, there is some data on marijuana use during breastfeeding and even while trying to conceive and its effects on fertility, but we will cover each of those in their own episode. Yeah. Now, something you might be wondering is, is this even something that comes up in the OB world? Sure. Um, and it, it really is. Every single day I have patients who are pregnant or want to be pregnant who use marijuana and they want to know if it affects their fertility or could have effects on their pregnancy. How about on the peach side of things? Yeah. So anytime there's a newborn who's has been exposed to THC marijuana in pregnancy, um, it comes down to something we make note of that then means we should take extra caution, making sure there's a needed surveillance for any potential developmental delays during early childhood. So let's get into the background and what we know about marijuana use in pregnancy. Yeah, from a legal perspective, marijuana has been considered illegal or illicit uh, since the early 1900s here in the US. It was officially outlawed uh, for any use. This includes medical use with the passage of the 1970s Controlled Substance Act. However, many states have begun to decriminalize its use, um, with California legalizing it for medical use in 1996, and by 2012, most states had legalized it for medical use. Mm -hmm. As of fall 2024, now in the U.S., cannabis is illegal in 38 states for medical use and in 24 states for recreational use. Notably, it's also legal for use in our neighbors to the north, Canada. Mm -hmm. So marijuana is now the most commonly used illegal or illicit drug during pregnancy, though as Kurt said, um, it's now legal in many, many places. The self-reported rates of marijuana use during pregnancy range from two to 5% in most studies, but it is suspected that that number may be underreported because of the self-reporting. Um, studies do show that use increases to 15 to 28% among young, urban, so socioeconomically disadvantaged women. So this is a really commonly used substance. And as such, it's really important to understand the safety and its potential effects on pregnancy. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's estimated that somewhere between one third and two thirds of marijuana users will continue its use during pregnancy, with many women believing that it's relatively safe to use while pregnant. So let's talk about marijuana as a drug and compound. What is it exactly and how does it work? Yeah, so the medicinal and psychoactive properties of marijuana are really all mediated by the compounds called cannabinoids. Mm -hmm. Now these compounds are absorbed by the lungs when you breathe it in or by the GI tract when eaten. Um, specifically that Delta 9 THC is the tetrahydrocannabinoid. Um, it's a small, highly fat soluble molecule that is distributed rapidly into the brain and into the fat tissue. Um, this THC is processed primarily by the liver mm. um, and it takes about 20 to 36 hours even for the body to get rid of just even half of that amount in those who use it occasionally and up to four to five days in heavy users, mm -hmm. meaning that it could take up to a whole month to completely excrete all of that amount from the body. So in terms of how does this work, um, sometimes when trying to study tricky things like drug exposures, um, scientists will use animal models, mm -hmm. mice, rats, sheep, etc. cetera. Um, and in these animal models, when looking at THC, THC did cross the placenta um, during pregnancy which produced fetal plasma levels that were about 10% of mom's levels after a short exposure. So whatever mom sees, baby sees like one tenth of that. That's what it looks like in these animal models. Okay. They saw significantly higher fetal concentrations um, after repeated exposures. Mm -hmm. Um, there is some limited human data that THC also appears in the breast milk, um, but we will talk more about this in a later episode. Yeah. Now, a really important thing to note here also is that it's really challenging to be certain about specific effects of marijuana on pregnancy mm -hmm. and the developing fetus. 
you know, as Sarah mentioned, like you really use a lot of animal models to study this because you really just can't do a randomized controlled tr trial about cannabis exposure mm -hmm. in pregnancy. Right. Um, there's also lots of other confounding factors in that women who use cannabis may also have other medical issues or have other exposures that could negatively affect the pregnancy. And so all of those are important to consider when looking at this data. Mm -hmm. The final thing that's really important to note is over the last decade, the concentration of THC in marijuana, other right. THC containing products has really increased in potency quite a bit, mm -hmm. which then means that some of these effects that have been seen prior may be a lot greater now with higher potency THC. There are three important prospective cohort studies with long-term follow-up that are ongoing and worth mentioning because they have provided some insight into both short-term and long-term um, effects of in utero exposure to cannabis products. Hmm. Um, these are the Ottawa Prenatal Prospective Study, or the OPS, um, the Maternal Health Practices in Child Development Study, or MHPCDs, and the Generation R Study, or Gen R. Hmm. These studies all recruited women who were pregnant and have followed their children into early childhood, adolescence, and early adulthood. They all controlled for sex, ethnicity, home environment, maternal socioeconomic status, prenatal alcohol and tobacco exposure, and current maternal substance use. A, a little summary of the findings can be found here if you want to pause. Um, and we're going to talk about some of the findings coming up. Yeah. Now, it's critical to note from these that while their findings here suggest that marijuana is associated with some potential harm, mm -hmm. these studies are limited in their terms of their ability to control for some several environmental and socioeconomic factors. Correct. And some of the findings that were seen in some of these studies were not reproduced in the others, suggesting, again, complex relationships between the effects of marijuana and neurodevelopment. Yes. So one example of this, um, in the OP study and the MHPCD studies, the preschool population was found to have lower scores on memory and verbal reasoning testing. Mm -hmm. But this finding was not found in the Gen R study. Um, so as you can see, some clarity on the effects of cannabis on the developing brain is going to require more study um, because it's just very difficult to tease this out. So the question is then, what do we actually know or what do the studies suggest about the effects of marijuana use in pregnancy? So for that we're gonna cover what is known or believed to be known about its effects for neurodevelopment, the effect on attention span and test scores later in life, mm -hmm. um, potential risk for birth defects, lower birth weight, um, preterm birth, stillbirth, et cetera. So again, here, some of this we have learned from animal models. And from those animal models, we understand that cannabinoids, um, endogenous, meaning the ones your body produces, or plant-derived cannabinoids affect the central nervous system through this very specific receptor they call cannabinoid receptor type 1. And from animal models, we know that those endocannabinoids, the ones your body makes, pay, play key roles in normal fetal brain development, including sort of the neurotransmitter systems, um, as well as nerve growth, migration, um, and survival. Now, interestingly, the human fetus exhibits this central nervous system cannabinoid receptor type 1 mm -hmm. as early as 14 weeks along. That's the yep. third month of gestation. Um, and that receptor density continues to increase throughout pregnancy, which suggests there's a role for these self-produced cannabinoids in normal human brain development. Animal studies have also shown that in utero exogenous exposure, so mom's use of THC, may disrupt normal brain development and function. Um, this shows up as impaired cognition and increased sensitivity to drugs of abuse, which is something we talk a little more about later, that there is some concern that using other substances like smoking or alcohol as well as marijuana may actually kind of make it all worse. So using cannabis THC exposure with other substances can potentially make the effects of those other substances even worse, alcohol, smoke exposure, etc. 
As we've briefly mentioned, some mm -hmm. studies have noted that children who are exposed to marijuana in utero have had lower scores on tests of things like visual problem solving, mm -hmm. visual motor coordination, and visual analysis than those children who are not exposed to marijuana in utero. Mm -hmm. Prenatal marijuana exposure may also be associated with decreased attention span and behavioral problems, and in some studies is an independent predictor of marijuana use by age 14. Now, again, this is tricky to really tease out. Yep. Effects of prenatal marijuana exposure on school performance are significantly less clear. Now, one longitudinal study found no significant effect on several measures of cognition and school performance among primarily middle-class children between the ages of 5 and 12. However, another longitudinal investigation of children of mostly urban, lower socioeconomic means observed poor reading, yep. poor spelling scores, and lower teacher perceived school performance in those children who had been exposed to marijuana in utero. Yep. So this really highlights some of the limits of longitudinal studies, but certainly does raise some concern that there could be harmful effects. Yeah, um, another example is in the Gen R population specifically, increased aggressive behavior and attention deficits were seen as early as 18 months of age. Mm -hmm. By preschool age, difficulties with verbal and visual reasoning, yep. hyperactivity, attention deficits, and impulsivity became apparent in both that OPS and the MHPCD populations. Mm -hmm. And these actually persisted throughout school years. At age 10, depression and anxiety symptoms became yep. apparent and were also found to predict earlier use of cannabis and poor adolescent and early adult achievement. Of course, this is one of those studies that cannot perfectly control mm -hmm. for other factors that can also lead to similar issues, so we take this with a grain of salt. Absolutely, but it does suggest reason for concern and the need for further study. It does. So what about marijuana use during pregnancy and the potential for birth defects? Yeah, so there have been multiple studies looking at birth defect rates with exposure to marijuana. And in these studies, there's been no strong, significant increased risk of birth defects in women, fetuses who've been exposed to THC marijuana. Interestingly, um, in one study, when specifically looking at marijuana use in the first month of pregnancy, there was an increased risk of anencephaly or the offspring being born without a brain. Yep. And this fi finding, again, may be really confounded because there are many other observations that women who use marijuana are less likely to take supplemental folic acid, um, which can help prevent these neural tube defects in pregnancy. So again, hard to tease this all out. Now, one of the commonly noted concerns about marijuana use and using during pregnancy is the possibility of it causing low birth weights. Mm -hmm. Now, low birth weight is important because it is associated with other complications of both the delivery and newborn period. As such, several studies have looked at kind of newborn birth weight as an outcome. Um, a 2016 meta-analysis looked at low birth weights as their primary outcome, and interestingly, marijuana use alone was not associated mm. with an increased risk of low birth weight, less than 2,500 grams. However, when they kind of stratified the results by amount of use, women who used marijuana less than once a week, again, were not at an increased risk of low birth weight, but when they looked at the women who used marijuana more than weekly, they found that they were significantly more likely to give birth to a newborn that weighed less than 2,500 grams. Yeah. Now, a more recent study, um, not considered in that meta-analysis, yep. found a slightly increased risk of birth weight of being less than the 10th percentile. So again, low birth weights in marijuana users. And this is after adjusting for confounders, um, both in tobacco users and those who didn't also smoke tobacco. Several studies have also noted statistically significantly smaller birth lengths and head circumferences um, along with those lower birth weights. But again, the question is, is a shorter birth length statistically or clinically significant, I should say. Yeah, and these findings were more pronounced among women who used more marijuana, mm -hmm. particularly during the first and second trimesters. Another concern you may have heard about is an increased risk of preterm birth. Absolutely, and as you can imagine, being born early is not great for that baby. Right. Comes with increased risks of respiratory issues, feeding issues to say the least, and all of these can be significant if the baby's born 
quite a bit earlier. Yeah. So importantly, most studies do not show an association between marijuana use and preterm birth. Yeah, correct. Now that meta-analysis we talked about from 2016, looking specifically at low birth weights, also looked at preterm birth before 37 weeks gestation. Yep. Now compared with women using marijuana less often, women who used marijuana at least weekly mm -hmm. were at an increased rate of preterm delivery. Yep. However, when marijuana use was stratified by concurrent tobacco use, yep. marijuana use alone was not associated with increased risk of preterm birth. Another retrospective cohort study that was published at the same time as that meta-analysis also found that the risk of preterm delivery among marijuana users was observed only in those who also were using tobacco. Yep. So it seems that concurrently using tobacco may be an important mediator for some of these adverse pregnancy outcomes we see among marijuana users. Now, there is one meta-analysis of 31 observational and case control studies that assessed neonatal outcomes in marijuana users versus non-users. Um, they looked at perinatal death and stillbirth as some secondary outcomes, and they found that compared with non-users, marijuana users experienced similar rates of perinatal death, but had somewhat higher stillbirth rates. Yeah. Now, this increased risk of stillbirth needs to be interpreted with caution because this study in particular couldn't adjust for all of those other factors like tobacco use, etc. And we know that those other things can play a big role in stillbirth rates. Yeah. All right, so what are the big takeaways here? Yeah, so again, this is a challenging topic to study. But the yeah. things that we have reasonable data is that exposure to marijuana or THC in utero is likely associated with some challenges with neurodevelopment, yep. um, specifically lower test scores, high rates of ADHD, mm -hmm. depression, anxiety, and lower achievement in later life. Potentially. Um, mm -hmm. From a medical standpoint, there's no significant increased risk of birth defects yep. um, and really unclear about increased rates of stillbirth um, or perinatal death possibly some increased rates of being born small with low birth weights in those women who used significant amounts of marijuana, mm -hmm. again, more than once weekly. So given that there are these concerns for harm and there are relatively few benefits to marijuana similar to alcohol and cigarette smoking, it is just recommended to be safe that you discontinue using marijuana during pregnancy or really, really cut back on use. Yeah, so hopefully all of this helps you understand a little bit of the literature. Um, it's not clear, but there is some evidence that marijuana use is not great for your baby. Yeah. Um, we promise we will keep you um, up to date as this body of knowledge out there grows. Um, and in the meantime, we'll see you next week. Bye guys. We're doctors. But not your doctors. Anything we've said in this video is for education or entertainment purposes only. It is not medical advice. Any specific medical questions you have should be directed to your provider.